Well, good morning and welcome to another thought for the day from New Milton Evangelical Free Church. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, as we come to your word, we ask that you teach us in accordance with our riches that you give us in Christ Jesus. We praise you for speaking into every area of our life and we ask you to open our minds and our hearts to receive that word with gladness and to give you thanks. Change us and make us more like the Jesus we love who first loved us. Amen. So we're going to read from 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. If there's one area which is written for today, it's the area of how men are to treat women and women to treat men. Even amongst Christians, there is discussion. Is the man to be the leader, the head of the home? Or is the thing a partnership, this business of marriage, in which both make the decisions together and it's kind of like a democracy? Well, God has specific things to say about the way he created the world in which we live and in which he created men and women to live in it. So it's no surprise then that he should speak about this whole business of marriage. We've already seen in verses 1 to 6 how he addresses wives and speaks to them about submission to their husbands. And that phrase there, in the same way, Peter uses to refer back to those verses earlier in chapter 3, where he starts to talk about citizenship under authority to government. Submit yourselves, in verse 13, for the Lord's sake to every human authority, or as the KJV says, in every human institution. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake, and further up it says, out of godly fear. So in the same way, or likewise, wives are to submit to husbands, and in the same way, out of godly fear, husbands are to treat wives. And we need perhaps to consider some of these phrases that Peter uses, because they don't really come across well some, somehow in the New International Version. Verse 7 starts out by saying, Husbands, live with your lives in accordance with knowledge. So the NIV has taken the tack that that is the knowledge of the husband of the wife. So there is consideration and understanding of her. But the question remains, where are we to get such an appreciation of what a woman is like and how she ought to behave in a marriage? Well, I've just been building uh, quite a few IKEA flat pack furniture units. And one of the, 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 the strict things that you have to do is work through those instructions literally step by step. Miss, skip a page and you suddenly find you're in the middle of nowhere and you're floundering. Things don't fit. There are the wrong uh, bits and pieces there in front of you and you don't know how to put them together. Follow the manufacturer's instructions regularly step by step, consistently, and you don't go so far wrong. Well, it's the same with us, with our belief in our Heavenly Father, isn't it? When we follow his instructions for how we are to live within our marriages, marriages then go right and start to glorify God. Um, as Peter puts it, nothing will hinder your prayers. So husbands, if you want your wives not to get in the way of your prayer life, to join you indeed in it and glorify God in how you pray, it's important that you hear what God says to you about your role in your marriage. So he says, live in accordance with knowledge. Get that knowledge from God's word. Study it. Take it to heart. Live it out in your attitude and in your action. How are we to treat our wives then? Well, two things he has to say here. One, they are to be treated with respect or honour 
as the weaker partner. We'll unpack that in a minute. And secondly, as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. So let's look at that second one first. What came to my mind as I read this is the, the glorious items called Fabergé eggs. This Russian uh, jeweler, Fabergé, who was commissioned to make uh, a present for the Tsar's wife to cheer her up. And he designed these intricate jewellery pieces made out of precious stones and silver and gold uh, and with such incredible workmanship that they're, they're just things of fascinating beauty. And each one was to contain a surprise so that when the two halves of the egg were open, something popped out, which was a delight and a pleasure to watch and behold. Maybe a little clockwork item that did something in front of your very eyes. So taking such a, a thing as an example, do you know, husbands, that God says your wife is a glorious being? Yes, she is. She's a co-heir with you of the inheritance that is promised to you. And Peter has verses that he dedicates to talking about this inheritance with, which won't spoil or fade. It, it won't corrupt. It won't decay. It will be yours for eternity and it will be hers. She is a co-inheritor with you of the grace of the life that God wants to pour out in eternity when Jesus comes again. So there's no inequality. There's no second level citizenship here. Women and men share in the gift of the grace and the goodness of God, both here and in eternity. But then there's this rather awkward praise about being the weaker vessel. And some have taken that and just pulled it apart, really, and made it say what it, what it doesn't say. It doesn't say women are second-class citizens. It doesn't say the woman is uh, insignificant in the marriage. Far from it. She is a thing to be respected and honoured, accorded worth in accordance with how God has created her. But nevertheless, in this way, she is somehow lesser than the man. So what way? And we need to understand this. Well, the word vessel, she is a weaker vessel, is really just used of any container. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, Paul uses it in the verse where he says, we have this treasure in vessels, jars of clay, to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. And what he's saying is in these earthly bodies, in this physical form, we have this glorious spiritual life into which God has poured his own spirit and he brings us alive in Christ. So in her body, in her physical state, the woman is lesser than the man. She is weaker. She is less stamina. She has less strength. And we see this played out in sports, no pun intended, um, where when you have men competing with women, there are areas of sports where that becomes a distinct advantage for the man and where a man can uh, supposedly choose his gender and claim to be a woman. There's this unfairness where it will be such people that always win. And the women athletes are complaining about this. So in that respect, the woman is to be protected and provided for. The age of chivalry should be the age of the Christian. And these are things that God's word advises to us. We are to look after our wives and, and value them and take care of them. Back to the Fab Fabergé egg. Just imagine if some uh, barbarian got hold of one and started just to play tennis with it. So picks up this intricate, beautiful, uh, incredibly designed object and starts to thrash it around across the tennis court net. Well, that would be stupid, wouldn't it? What, a, what a, uh, uh, an incredible travesty. And the thing would be destroyed in minutes. Well, in the same way, husbands are to value their sensitive wives and to use that sensitivity to the glory of God and bestow honour, respect, praise, uh, uplift her, edify her. And the last thing to say is this, not in this verse, but elsewhere. Paul says that marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. So it might be objected that Jesus never got married, but you know, he knows everything about brides because one day the church who is his bride will be brought to him at that great wedding feast. And he already is preparing her for himself. Oh yes, he knows how to treat 
a bride. And we have the opportunity, us husbands, of reflecting Christ and the church, that picture, to the world in our marriages. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to do just that. We want to show Jesus to the world in the way that we live, in our individual lives and in our marriages. So we pray that your word might come to our hearts with the power that accompanies it so that we can be changed to be more like him. In his name we pray. Amen.